Dear friends, welcome to yet another installment of Orbital Geek. In this video, we will embark on an extraordinary journey through the most unusual and unsettling cosmological theories that exist. From the intriguing hypothesis of the multiverse, with the idea of infinite universes beyond our own, to the simulation theory, which suggests that our entire reality could be just a computer simulation created by an advanced civilization. We will also explore the enigmatic white holes, the ekpyrotic theory of the Great Collision about the origin of the Big Bang, and the possibility that encoded alien messages are being transmitted through pulsars. But do we really live in a cosmic matrix? Are we just characters in a computer program of a superior race? Watch until the end to discover these extraordinary theories and leave your comments with your opinion on them. No matter how much human beings enjoy thinking that we are advanced and knowledgeable, when it comes to scientific fields and cosmological understanding, we really are not. Not long ago we thought the Earth was flat, and even Albert Einstein's grand ideas are beginning to seem a bit outdated, thanks to the puzzling world of quantum mechanics, which states that something can exist here and there at the same time. So let's begin. One of the most intriguing, controversial and simply unsettling cosmological theories is the multiverse hypothesis, which suggests the existence of multiple universes beyond our own. Now, considering that our own cosmos includes around 350 billion galaxies and that the known observable universe extends for something around 94 billion light years, the notion that this may just be a tiny particle in the much larger multiverse is enough to make your head spin. You may think this is a new and radical idea, but it actually originated from some ancient Greek philosophers, namely Leucippus and Democritus in the 5th century, ideas that were gradually added to and expanded upon over the following centuries. The term multiverse was actually first used by American philosopher and psychologist William James in 1895, and the idea gradually seeped into the collective cosmological consciousness. However, it remains a deeply polarizing idea, it is hard to even begin to grasp the multiverse hypothesis. How can we even imagine multiple, gigantic universes? One of the most common and probably easiest to process visual images is like a ball pit for kids, where each ball is a different universe. Or maybe millions upon millions of individual bubbles floating around a giant room is a better way to think of it. Because ball pits, though big, are not as big as all that we are going to discuss today there is absolutely no evidence to suggest the multiverse theory is correct. Still, there are certain issues with current, established cosmological theories that could lend some weight to it. Let's start with the Big Bang. Most scientists, cosmologists, and pretty much everyone accepts the theory that our universe was created via a powerful explosion around 13.8 billion years ago. A trillionth of a trillionth of a second after the event the universe was about the size of the Earth relative to the Sun, but rapidly grew in the first few seconds, faster than the speed of light according to some calculations, before slowing down, although it is still expanding. All of this sounds perfectly reasonable, but what existed before the Big Bang? One component of the multiverse theory is that our Big Bang was just one of many that occurred, each one triggering a growth that eventually generated a universe. Another idea is that the Big Bang created many bubbles that expanded out from it and have evolved independently, possibly with their own physical laws and realities. Proponents argue that this could explain the fine-tuning of the physical constants and why the fundamental laws are so ideally suited for life to emerge. Suppose there are an infinite number of universes. In that case, there must also be an infinite number of combinations of atoms and particles the overwhelming majority of which cannot sustain life, but a tiny number can. So are we living in a computer program? If you think this is veering into the strange and wondrous realm known as madness, you may be right. But then again, maybe that's just what you're programmed to think. The simulation theory proposes that our reality, including the entire universe and everything within it, is nothing more than a computer simulation created by an advanced civilization or superior beings. This may sound like a cosmic conspiracy theory straight out of the Matrix movie, but much of it has its roots in a paper published in 2003 by Oxford professor Nick Bostrom titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? The simulation theory really does sound completely absurd at first glance, and yet several leading scientists have at least acknowledged that this is not a theory we should simply dismiss out of hand. 
At the heart of the simulation theory is the hypothesis that an advanced civilization, possibly far more technologically adept than our own, developed the ability to create simulations of their reality. These simulations could be so intricate and authentic that the simulated beings, us, within them, could believe they are living in a physical, tangible universe, unaware that it is all just a fabrication. Those who defend this theory point to the rapid advancement of virtual reality and computer simulations in our own society. Sure, games like The Sims and Minecraft are still a long way off from this, but is it not logical to believe that at some point, our video game characters will become so advanced that they will essentially be able to think and do things for themselves, just like human beings? Knowing where to stop with this theory is difficult because it can start to become quite fanciful. Are we really the simulation of a master race that lived on Earth millions of years ago, but evolved to the point where they no longer exist in the same way we do? Are we programmed participants in a game created by a single, omnipotent player? There might even be some who think that player is God. And then there is the idea of what reality actually is. And for that, let's have a quote from theoretical physicist David Bohm. Reality is what we take to be true. What we take to be true is what we believe. What we believe is based upon our perceptions. What we perceive depends on what we look for. What we look for depends on what we think. What we think depends on what we perceive. What we perceive determines what we believe. What we believe determines what we take to be true. What we take to be true is our reality. If the theory of black holes was a confusing and unsettling theory, well, welcome to the world of white holes, where everything happens in reverse and cosmology becomes even more mind-bending. A black hole is formed when a massive star exhausts its nuclear fuel and collapses under the force of its own gravity. That collapse creates a region in space with such intense gravitational pull that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. The immediate area surrounding a black hole is called the event horizon, and anything that crosses the event horizon gets trapped inside the black hole, and from there, your guess is as good as mine. One theory is that black holes act as gateways, connecting different worlds or universes, maybe even a multiverse superhighway, if you want to start blending these theories together. If that were the case, it would only make sense that there must be an exit to the gateway. And given that black holes never emit anything, it would only make sense, and I'm using this term very loosely, that the exit must be different from the entrance, which is perhaps where white holes come into play. White holes can be viewed as the time-reversed versions of black holes, spewing out everything instead of consuming. Although there has been no direct witnessed evidence of white holes, they have captured the imagination of scientists, science fiction writers, and those enthusiast individuals who tend to believe pretty much anything on the internet. Despite this idea being highly theoretical, it was foreseen by Einstein's theory of gravity, though his notion of a singularity within a black hole, where nothing could pass, seems to undermine this idea, along with its connection to gateways. But who knows? Even Einstein's theories are now being questioned by quantum mechanics. Would white holes hold the key to time travel or parts of the intricate space-time fabric? We will leave the white hole theory with one final mind-bender. While there is no evidence of white holes, one idea seems to fit the criteria. What if the Big Bang was the result of a white hole? What if everything that has been spewed out by it for the past 13.9 billion years came from a completely different area or time? We'll just leave you ruminating on that one. One of the issues that the Big Bang theory leaves unanswered is what happened before that powerful eruption that created us all. What existed before life started, and what happened to what existed before? The ekpyrotic theory, also known as the much less eloquent Big Crunch theory, is a cosmological model that suggests our universe was created through the collision of two higher dimensional worlds, referred to as brains, themselves part of a much larger shape that us mere mortals can only dream of truly comprehending. Before tackling the Big Crunch, let's take a quick look at brain theory, which has much in common with the multiverse hypothesis. Brain theory, short for membrane, is part of the broader string theory and suggests that we live within higher dimensional membranes floating around space, or perhaps the greater multiverse. We humans experience our reality through four dimensions, three visual ones, height, width, and depth, and another through time, which only moves in one direction. However, according to string theory, 
The universe operates with up to 10 dimensions, and different parts of our membrane experience various different dimensions. The universe we see around us, then, would consist of only a small cross-section of membrane. Picture this as a single sheet of paper within a larger stack, with a bit of space between each sheet. Therefore, each membrane is its own universe within its own reality, governed by its own laws and motions. So, in a broad outline of membrane theory, the idea behind the Big Crunch theory is that a universe is created when two of those membranes collide, converting their kinetic energy into matter and energy, creating an eruption that sparks life, the Big Bang. That intense chaos pushes the two membranes away from each other, and they begin to accelerate in opposite directions. However, another part of these theories is that the universe and its life is cyclical. This means the two membranes eventually start to decelerate, and eventually the process reverses and they start accelerating towards each other again. When they finally meet, they collide into each other and another Big Bang occurs, creating two completely different universes, almost certainly in a radically different form than what we have now, and the whole process just starts over again. Every few years, a wave of excitement arises among those tasked with scouring the skies for alien life, usually accompanied in the newspapers with a fairly discouraging warning not to get our hopes up too much, and they are usually right. Humans have been sweeping the universe with a variety of radio telescopes since the late 1950s, and so far they have found absolutely nothing. However, there have been some high-profile false starts that we haven't been able to explain. One of the most famous occurred in 1977, when astronomer Jerry Amon, who was using the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University to look for possible radio signals from space, stumbled upon something extraordinary. Nicknamed the WOW signal, after the sole word Amon scribbled next to the findings, what he recorded that day was an intense signal originating from the Chai Sagittari star system. It lasted for 72 seconds. Unfortunately, the signal was only picked up once and was never fully explained, though it did add some much-needed vigor to the fledgling SETI program. As technology advanced, so too did our ability to sweep the night sky. In the last two decades, there have been several promising leads, such as the Breakthrough Listen Project recording signals from a small red dwarf star called Proxima Centauri, or signals from the YZ SETI system and the rocky exoplanet orbiting it called YZ SETI B, and the very large array Carl G. Jansky radio telescopes in New Mexico. One explanation frequently used to dismiss the findings is the existence of pulsars, highly dense, rapidly spinning neutron stars, which are the collapsed cores of massive stars that have undergone a supernova explosion. Their rapid spin gives the impression they are blinking as they emit intense electromagnetic radiation from their poles like giant beacons. And this is where a bit of the outlandish comes in. There is a not so widespread theory, still quite far from the mainstream, that although pulsars are completely natural occurrences, it is not out of the realm of possibility that an advanced civilization could manipulate them to transmit messages to Earth and even use their waves as a kind of intergalactic highway that could propel spacecraft at speeds much faster than would be possible without them. In a paper written in 2014 and published in the journal New Astronomy, it was suggested that radio waves coming from pulsars could be encoded with information beamed from an orbiting satellite nearby or, even more radically, by building a structure around the pulsar and placing messages directly in front of the radiated waves. They could then be used in reverse to catch messages back to them from deep space. It sounds like they are stretching the possibility to the absolute limit, but after the theories we have explored in this video, it may not seem so far-fetched. As fascinating and thought-provoking as these alternative cosmological theories are, it is crucial to remember that science is built on solid evidence and rigorous observations. To date, there is no conclusive proof corroborating the existence of multiverses, reality simulations, or white holes. Still, the human mind continues to be driven to explore the limits of knowledge, seeking answers to the deepest mysteries of the cosmos. The beauty of science lies precisely in its ability to evolve and reinvent itself as new discoveries emerge. Who knows what revelations the future holds in store for us? Perhaps in a few decades, these theories today considered outlandish will become the new scientific orthodoxy. So, what do you think? Are we trapped in a cosmic simulation? Or are these ideas just philosophical musings? 
Leave your thought-provoking comment and share with us your visionary perspective on the secrets of the universe.